So can we uh, like just take the feedback if someone you know remote are able to hear and see? They they'll be coming over there. Yeah. They'll be able to hear here. I actually, I actually, I actually from Pune team. They are able to hear you. Okay, awesome. That's cool. Yeah. I'll be muting yeah. my my microphone so that we can hear so, you clearly. Yeah, sure. So now let's begin our journey. It's a short journey uh, which will uh, enlighten us about the concepts and future present and everything related to MongoDB. And uh, if you guys have any question in between, we'll I'll be happy to take them up as we go. So as you see, it's about 19 to 20 slides presentation and we'll be like spending about uh, three to five minutes on each slide so that we can understand, discuss each topic, and then we will move on. This will give us an overall picture about MongoDB, NoSQL databases, comparison, you know, with a thing with we already know we can associate them properly, like RDB, MS, MySQL, or Oracle, the concept, something like that. So, uh, Uh, the very first uh, uh, slide I would like it to dedicate to Ash because it's from his motivation. He shared his thoughts inside me about copy and then uh, like uh, why Mongo? Why? Like, why no SQL? Why? So there are like a lot of concepts which will be coming up. So now here is uh, uh, some short introduction of me. So I'm a full stack developer with about 12 years of experience. This is my foot here with Action Labs and one year with Rackspace and MongoDB. So I, we have been working on MongoDB since one year and uh, my teammate Sabinesh is there. So he is a, another expert who is like here in Bangalore office. So you can reach him out for anything related to, you know, hand on experimentation or anything. Since we are really using it in uh, uh, like production data. This is like for developers. So whosoever are developer, they can just finish it. It's a like seven week course. At the last slide, I'm going to uh, you know tell you about Mongo University. And this is recently I finished, which uh, this course focuses mainly on DBA, like database administrator part of Mongo database. So now let's move on. So. Uh, here is a question like as an application developer what we think is more important uh, application or the data for organizing that you have an option there is some earthquake or something and you have like two servers one at JP number one at let's say here and one is hosting the application another is data so which one you would like to say if you have one choice data so data is the most crucial thing you think about bank if they their database is corrupt bank is nothing like it's like with everything data is more important than application but like uh, uh, i mean it's sad or whatever but there are like lot many uh, you know frameworks and things have been evolved on the application side so far in these years but in data there were like we were restricted to just like maybe Oracle or MySQL or very less thing with very restricted and congested options. But now uh, people are, since we are doing more data mining, we are doing more data analysis. So uh, let's see first, like what are the database engines and what are the data things? Oh, it's still in slide one. Oh, there is a lot of lag. Okay, people who have joined, I am on slide five, but unfortunately seems like uh, slide one has been shown. I'll uh, share after the presentation. Priscilla can 
circulate it uh, to everybody because we still see one slide one. There is a huge left hand side. So this is a website which speaks about database engines. So the way share prices goes up and down or there is some authority which evaluates like Java is better than Python or whatever. So here is the link. Maybe I should unshare and reshare. Um, just close it. Okay. Uh, action. Maps. Action 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 maps. Yeah. Hi, so uh, are you able to see my screen? What do you see on the shared screen? Uh, we are not able to see anything. It shows waiting for view as against screen. Okay. So we will wait and I'll also ping the link which I am. I'm just trying to display the all the DB engines with their latest ratings. We can try. Can you please connect using Etherpad? Maybe we'll skip the hands-on part and we'll continue. I'll email you the presentation. No, I just need a then, then we have to change switch over entire thing, right? Organizer, huh? Or he, he just have to become presenter, presenter, okay. right? 
Yeah. Okay, you can make it then. Okay, I can make it. Yeah, that's a mix of Sorry. Maybe uh, she can see a problem. Can see. Oh, that's great. So maybe you know, uh, uh, I apologize for the guys who are like remote. They can use it as a radio, like radio session. Uh, and then uh, I'll continue with the guys who are here with audio visual. So for you, it probably might be audio, but that still might be some informative uh, stuff which could be useful. So if we see all the databases which are right now in market, uh, including Amazon Redshift, which is like very good for cloud and uh, DB, DB, DB2. In the top five of all the databases, all kind of databases, including cache and uh, relational databases, object databases, MongoDB is in top five. And if we consider non-RDBMS, uh, this is at the number one. And they have ratings like last year, how was it and how it is performing. So if you guys take interest and learn it, it's going to come on third to whatever it would be top. And uh, uh, for any application, as a developer, you have to have a good understanding of database. And MongoDB will help you doing that. Now, as a programmer, when we talk about object orientation, we do programming in objects, right? In the object world, we don't program uh, like table. There is no table-oriented uh, programming you might have heard of, right? But if we talk about relational database, it talks about in terms of table. Everything is a table, right? And then you connect tables, you join tables, you do a lot of exercises. And then the frameworks like Hibernate and all, they come in picture and they convert those ob tables into objects. And that's how we use it, right? So once we use directly the object storage like MongoDB, your object is directly getting stored. It's directly getting retrieved. So there is a performance gain basically. So let's uh, move on and I have to, show you one uh, like Facebook, how Facebook uses it, right? So uh, let's see uh, who are the MongoDB major customers and then we'll go to the uh, Facebook page and we'll understand how NoSQL helps it and how the Oracle might have, you know, the company might have gone bankrupt if they'll convert to RDBMS, the Facebook, Twitter, and Expedia. So let's try to see the customers. So we see here, uh, there are like uh, uh, several customers which are like very renowned in industry these days, which are using MongoDB, which includes Twitter, which includes like Facebook. And uh, I mean, you name it and all the giants are there. However, there is a catch that some part of their, most of the part which is usable, they are trying to leverage MongoDB there. Now, why MongoDB? Basic thing is performance because there are two websites. One is like very good and one is like very responsive. Let's say you have two apps to book a cab, right? So one cab application is very beautiful, wonderful, but it takes time to load and response. Another is just available. You book it, you get the confirmation, you can take a ride. So which one you would prefer? The one which is more responsive, right? Same with if you're trying to book the tickets. So let's say you are using Expedia versus IRCTC, you know, which has, which exposes the Oracle or whatever databases, errors on the screen, and you cannot figure out because it's very slow. It has transaction. It goes through a lot of stuff, right? So response is the key if you want faster response. Now, why MongoDB provides better response is we are trying to eliminate the middleman here. And who are the middlemen? So the middleman is when you have a table, you have some associations, you have some constraints, and then you have, let's say, JDBC or some kind of hibernate or layer in different programming languages, which will ultimately convert your object, like your table database, into the object, 
and then it's consumed. However, how MongoDB works? It works on JSON format. So let's see json.org. So MongoDB is nothing, but you will just have a very plain, simple, lightweight JSON object which would directly get stored in the database and which can be retrieved directly. Now, once we like use a Facebook page, in Facebook page we see a lot of information uh, on the like uh, home page once we go there. So just imagine if you have like different, uh, uh, let's say different tables for your likes and like the movies you like for everything, right? The friends you have, the mutual, so you have to write query to do, uh, you know, intersection with, to figure out the mutual friends or all, right? So uh, for that, if you use conventional RDBMS, it's going to take a lot of time, right? And it's like Facebook will just die. But here they called it as pre-join, which means they will embed all the information in the like single document. And once you load the application, it would just uh, get loaded uh, uh, in a single go. And that's how uh, it, uh, you know, it responds better. So all the information, whichever is required in a single go, instead of uh, putting it in a normalized different tables, you put all the information inside one view, single view, single document, you say profile ID, let's say Rakesh, right? Or let's say Devender. So you, uh, the, uh, there is one document for Devender. Inside that document, all the information is embedded inside it. So in a single retrieval, all the information can be showed up and can be, you know, populated on the screen. So that's how it makes it like really, really fast. Now, uh, MongoDB on Action Innovation Center. So uh, there is a step-by-step -step tutorial which is already available on our Action Labs uh, Innovation Center. So I'll just open that link to give you a brief about it. So uh, uh, for MongoDB, if you really want to learn the CRUD operation, the basic CRUD op operation, like creating, retrieving the objects, and there are like different filters and there are different things, you can just follow one by one what is a Mongo shell. So they, I have just published this a couple of months back. It takes you to what is a Mongo shell, what are how to create database and tables in MongoDB, introduction to JSON, and then uh, like taking dumps, loading JavaScript. There are like several uh, things. So we are going to publish this link. Feel free to take your time and go through it. So we'll go on high level concepts. However, all, and these are like very short videos. If you try one video, it would be like three minutes or five minutes. Just pause it and try doing it hands on. So it gives you more exposure. So daily you come, you're occupied in your regular work. If you want to learn something extra, something which is like advanced, you just pick one tutorial, spend five minutes, just try doing it, and then um, it will help you to explore it more. So now I'm going to uh, tell you, uh, let me just close everything. We'll just uh, assume that there is nothing and then we'll start from scratch to give you one flavor about how Mongo really works and then we'll explore a client of Mongo. So uh, let's say if Mongo is installed to uh, start the server or MongoD, you just write MongoD and MongoD process will get started. And then uh, uh, there is something which is called the Mongo shell. Now, what is Mongo shell? This is something which will use to extract data from the Mongo process. So uh, then, uh, uh, so it says if you, so there are like different parameters. We are taking a very simple use case. Otherwise you have to say like Mongo, which port, what is the user ID and everything. But Mongo is intentionally made very simple with its own defaults. So you don't have to worry much about as an application developer. You focus more on development and database takes, you know, its own defaults. Let's say if there is no database, you can imagine that uh, you just need one single attribute in a product table. 
if we go with uh, relational data, you need to know production box, you have to shut down your database server, then you have to add a table or remove a column or layer. So it's like very hectic, but in Mongo, you, it, it's like dynamic structure. Now, what do you mean by dynamic structure is you can do things as you go. So let's say we say show DBs. So uh, we will create, there is no database which is called as Axion. So we'll just uh, try to insert something in Axion and if it's, even if it's not there, it would get created. Same with the collections. So right now we are using TestDB, right? So if we say use Axion, switch to Axion, now we say use uh, show. So these are like simple commands which will, uh, you know, uh, so this is like command prompt and the people who don't like who are from windows background who just don't like terminals and all that for them there is a tool which is called as robo mongo so it will help you to uh, see uh, everything like visually so once you are here you can just pick any these are your databases right so let's say nis is uh, the database which i use it in some of the project how many collection now each table is called as a collection and each collection let's say we have some product product is a collection so here you can visually see all the objects this is the object and this object is nothing but it's just a json document which is having the important uh, key value pair a key is let's say a product ID with a value, device type with a value, and uh, it's like let us take a more descriptive one. So this is uh, uh, pretty simple here. Let's try to go here and say use NIS show. In my in MySQL we say tables. Here we say collections. So we show collections. Now we say db dot products -S -S dot find so it could show but this looks like pretty bad you you are not able to <laughs> I'm not sure like the remote people are still able to like catch up you have the okay we'll buy one let's buy Okay, let's order one today. So we'll do this same thing and we'll say pretty pretty. So between these two angular Are and what are your like attributes like your mail or what is your nationality and everything right so same way in mongodb the underscore id for any object is going to fetch the information and uh, uh, it is going to identify and get uh, all the like uh, help to retrieve or operate on any object right it's an object database so each object has an underscore id now, why it is yeah yeah. One is uh, does MongoDB support any other format except uh, apart from JSON? No. Second, uh, second, I think you tell that like how that object ID is just uh, page Yeah, number. sure. You are doing Yeah. So uh, each person has different fingerprints. Like fingerprints are like some pattern randomly. Like no two people fingerprints will match. Same way, um, the uh, uh, way they create this underscore ID, it's a like long hash code, and there is 99.99% probability of it being random. The reason is it's like combination of first is the timestamp, second is the process ID, third is your machine Mac address ID, something which is like unique for all the machine. 
so in whatever machine you are trying to generate the object or trying to save the object mongo database is going to create this object id based on all these uh, factors like your machine address is unique right and then process and time is of course unique in milliseconds so that's how uh, the object generated on my machine versus generate what's your name manas uh, versus on manas's machine at the same time it's not going to it's game not going to be same it's going to be different so uh, this becomes the id and that's the power of mongo because if you use relational database you have to go with like student id record id book id all kind of id you connect those ids and you have to do a lot of hassles for creating to make them unique or make them in some particular order or something like that here mongo does the heavy lifting it generates those id you just need to take care that just retrieve it using uh, the object id so we'll just try to uh, do a filter using the underscore id and then so there were like lot of records here you can match so we say like select star from products where product name is equal to this 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 something like that uh, the query which we form in oracle or some relational databases here it's like super simple the developer does not has to be a db expert or he does not have to know the queries he can just uh, uh, you know whatever he is looking for he can just pass on the keys and values and he would get the value so let's say in this database whatever devices type which are servers i just need that so people who are develop like who are like ui developers they just have to pass whatever uh, the parameter they want as is to the mongodb and they'll get the result you can just count that also so there are like let's say uh, the device type which is server if you count it's 3 so uh, the query is also again a key value kind of uh, uh, you know json uh, structure to a query so it makes it like super simple you don't have to remember lot of like the query language whatever so uh, to learn uh, uh, mongo and to expertise you just need to know the json and once you know the simple like json you are able to work with I, I, like all ui is json right mostly these days like angular or whatever you and you know if same thing which is in ui if it is in the database look like how fast they can connect however you have json on or some something in ui and then you do translation and something else in this inference like it creates some mismatch it requires lot of processing so that is what uh, uh, the main motive is uh, using json uh, here in uh, like
Asim is giving the presentation. Say hi. Hi, Asim. No, no. Mm -hmm. One second. Uh, uh, hi, Asim. No, he's not able to hear us also from this side. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, come again? Okay. Uh, hey, Asim? No, no, no. Even Ivar was also not coming this side. No, no, no one is able to hear him. I think from Mumbai, from Mumbai team. Everyone here. Yeah, Even Mumbai, also. Mumbai team also. Jane and all have been here, unable to hear. From Pune, IT. Yeah, even Pune also. They said unable to hear. Someone from Pune. Abhijit also pinged, saying he... No, no. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Hmm? Asim is there, not there in the list also. No? Okay. Hey, uh, Priscilla. Asim is... We are not able to see him in the list. I think he is... You know, uh, maybe you know, he got exited from the... Hmm. Uh, go to meeting link itself. Yes, rejoin again. Okay. Yeah, someone is joining. No. Uh, t uh, yeah, tell him to rejoin again and tell, uh, tell him to, you uh, know, one second.
Hello. Can you hear me? Hmm? Can you able to hear me? There. Hello guys, can you able to hear me? I think I think yeah you can keep this machine there and you can just try the uh, yep, sir. Yeah, I am speaking now. Are you able to hear me now? Little bit better? Uh, yes, I think it's better now. Okay, awesome. Yeah, but... so I will like continue and I'll just take like 30. Okay, yeah. I think we lost you again. We can't able to hear you anything. Hello. Uh, Asim. Shishi, appreciate the Asim. Asim lost again. Uh, I, I can able to hear your voice, but not Asim. Asim is not there. Organization like the big organization have reached that thing while uh, uh, you know scaling vertically. That after a certain point they pump up more money, but then they don't get the value out of it. So that's how uh, the thing which is called as horizontal scaling comes up, which means that uh, instead of increasing, let's say I have one laptop, and then somehow I uh, do the cluster programming like clustering, right? So I can use like normal laptops of the employees. Once they go home, they leave here and each uh, laptop can contribute in some or the other way. So even if there is like a very complex mathematical logic, let's say we are trying to find some alien signal and we have to process it, which has like huge algorithm, which is required to be processed on a one big mainframe, which we don't have, right? So we like distribute it and smaller, smaller commodity servers or laptops or computers, they can process and combine the results. That's how. So uh, we'll take like some simple exam, uh, example. So uh, we see that uh, uh, we have to transport people from here to other office. So either we use bus. Now the problem with bus is you can go single decker then you can do double decker but after that you cannot go like triple decker or you know there is a limit so what do you do instead of having the architecture 
which scales horizontally you rely on cabs so cabs are independent if you have a bus if you have to drop everybody imagine the route of it could be like 8 hours to drop everybody but if you divide it like in small cars you have like five four cars send in like in four directions and at the same time like if you have bus and you have like uh, 200 employees all of a sudden you scale down your companies i mean uh, not doing well just don't test this to kinesh so let's assume that company is not doing well and they have like instead of 200 employees they now have 50 so you can you cannot get rid of bus you still have to run it the expenses of diesel would be same the space right but if you have small small cabs if company is not doing well second day you don't use those cabs you save on fuel you save on resources and everything right so that's how uh, the scaling horizontally versus scaling vertically concept works so in mongodb they have uh, uh, like uh, smaller smaller servers which create a replication set which is nothing but a duplicate copy of one uh, proper server and most of the time like our application are like read intensive which means i am trying to shop something in amazon so product would remain same but instead of keeping one server which every is hit by everybody they will have like replicated like replication when you have another copy you say duplicate right when you have third copy fourth copy triplicate a quadruplate that is called as replication so that is a concept here in mongodb so you replicate server and put it in a different geographical location you put one in singapore one in us one in london one in australia something like that so whichever is nearer to you you are like you can hit from there and then you can read from anywhere so you don't launch product daily right so these servers somehow the replicated server they have some mechanism so they they are in sync with each other so there is one product which is uh, like added of course you write to the primary so it this concept is called as primary slave so you have a primary server and all the slaves whatever comes in the primary they will just you know get it from there and that that information there is in secondary so whenever you are reading you divert all your reads to the secondaries so the read is very fast from uh, and uh, whatever you are writing uh, that keeps in sync with so like if say we are whatever example we are seeing in the screen so this is primary first one and all of them are following them they are secondary so uh, the load typically the load is divided here if you have one server 50 people will use this one so it will become a bottleneck here if there are like five small servers each one can handle 10 10 10 so it's how we say you know divide and rule so this is the concept of replication any questions for replication or now another concept is called as sharding like replication and sharding in no sequel are like really important so sharding means uh, uh, when you try to save your data what you do what you do is uh, uh, let's say you have entire population of india if you are trying to put them if you have some mechanism that all the tamil nadu guys will go in this server and all the like uh, maharashtra uh, state people will go in another server so it becomes easier for you so there is a shard key and shard key could be anything let's say state so you uh, write using that shard key and you retrieve so if there are like uh, 2.5 crore people but then if you just focus on tamil nadu server you will be ending up you know uh, there is a thing which is called as data scan in mongodb so you end up scanning lesser records so it becomes very much faster that's how the sharding works that uh, you have a shard key and that's how you divide or your load among smaller servers
so uh, we'll just talk about the dynamic structure uh, versus the like uh, so how it comes is uh, uh, nowadays the uh, frameworks are like very smart and they are able to take care of a uh, lot of things so previously the mentality was uh, we will have a dba the application development was vice versa like first they will design the database structure based on that they will do the query optimization and then they will give it to the middle uh, middleware whosoever is developing that will go to the ui guy and that's how but jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai that means whatever the customer sees that way he loves it right he fall in love with your application if he has all the information which he needs so nowadays the thing has been inverted the ui uh, whatever you want to show your attributes or information based on that you have to design the database it's not the other way around that based on database hey this attribute is not there we cannot show it in ui let's create another story let's have another uh, uh, what uh, the tag spike and all that because we are agile and market is like very competitive and we have to move faster so uh, you don't have to uh, like you have this uh, dynamic like database structure so you can add any column you can embed any information inside the json object and then uh, on that single uh, uh, whenever you are trying to insert whenever even in the production database that information is available so we'll take a example of product i would like to do it just hands on so let us just try we'll just have one pro usually what happens that if you have a product table you have four columns or five columns and then uh, and product company is selling just one product today but they'll sell another product let's say for example i am trying to sell a laptop right and tomorrow my company start selling coconut oil it can happen like like through some acquisition and uh, day after that i my company is selling milk products so milk product has expiry date best buy date quality quantity and uh, the laptops has something different like configuration cpu and all that so imagine that if you have one table and inside that table if you have to fit the cpu gigahertz versus the fat in the milk and all that so it's like impossible in rdbms table structure either you will end up having lot many columns with null 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 value which are not applicable so it's a overkill right but in mongodb if you have a uh, like product it's like dynamic so i can have any uh, let's try to create one so i don't know like remote guys are able to catch up my screen because of delay but i'll just create a product table we call it as collection and then we try to add two or three random products and then i'll just uh, uh, like we'll validate this hypothesis that how easy and flexible it is with mongodb to do agile development in terms of changing requirements in terms of not getting bottleneck because of lack of some columns in the table or any changes so which db we are in let's say we are in test that is fine and then we say show collections we might already have a product db dot product dot find db dot so let's create a prod so we have a json structure we will say name of the product i think a couple of people not able to see your screen but they are able to share your voice okay later on we'll share the video video yeah yeah recording for sure but i need so right now on my screen we are trying to use the mongo shell and we have just created a product table or the collection it was like super simple and now we are trying to add uh, some of the document inside it so we have a product called as laptop we just have one attribute let's say and we'll also see size size it's 13 inch let's say 13 inch laptop anything random so we have a prod 
Now nothing has inserted. Uh, this is a total purely JavaScript in the console. Developers can, uh, you know, just imagine that if we go to more tools and then we go to developers tool, whatever JavaScript we are able to execute here in the uh, same we can't see us. Same thing, same thing works here. And there is a like very descriptive video on my YouTube channel which relates how the JavaScript. This is nothing ja uh, Mongo uses pure JSON in JavaScript. So that would work. So we'll say bb dot product dot input and then we say product. So once uh, the insertion happens, it would say one, otherwise zero or some error. So this has some value now product. So let's try to find. We just have to say find. Now we see that uh, underscore ID Mongo has put this for us and these other um, attribute it has like put uh, like it has done this job for us. So this was a product which was uh, laptop. Now let's say we have another product which is having some different schema altogether. Right. Let's say some milk product. Let's say buttermilk. Right. So name of the product is buttermilk. And what uh, could be the attribute? They would be different. Let's say fat percentage. And then let's say quantity. It could also have size. But instead of size, it might have weight. So we say weight is 250 grams. Let us put it string. Now you see that uh, if you have to create in Oracle, you have to define the data structure. That weight could be a number or it could be where care, where care 32 or whatever. So it slows down, right? Here I just have to create a product with weight or whatever thing. It, I mean, it's very easy. And our framework will take care whenever we have like if we are using Java, we have like type casting, conversion, auto boxing, everything. So we rely more on our frameworks rather than getting bottlenecked by the database and slowing us down. So we just created weight as 250 gram, right? And let's say fat, uh, there is some milk fat inside it or SNF value. So let's say milk fat is 2%. We'll say it as product one. So this is a, a typical uh, MongoDB document. If you are uh, creating some RESTful web services, this could be a payload. Whatever you want to save, that is your payload. And then you say db dot. So I'm using up arrow keys here. So whatever last executed commands, they will automatically, you know, show up just as Windows in DOS key. Now we will say find here. So we see two products and both have different structure and both are lying here comfortably. So that is the power here, which we, you know, come to know that that is what we call as dynamic structure that you don't have to necessarily feel constrained or tied up with the structure or with the data uh, data type or anything else that's all now uh, we'll just uh, see uh, one example like hands on of uh, doing joins now how and why join skills so if i have small company 10 people and i can like uh, normalize make two different tables and it, and each query will uh, iterate through all the table, uh, you know, let's say employee and salary, there is a relationship. So if there is salary table for each employee, th there would be different. So it's a Cartesian product that if I have 10, peer, 10 uh, uh, employees and then if I have, let's say 20 entries for um, in the salary table or bank account table, so 10 cross 20, that number of multiplication happens before we get the result. But if I have 10,000 employees like TCS and if I have like uh, several other on that join part, then the uh, multiplication goes into lakhs, 10,000 multiply by 10 if you do. And then that lakh transaction happens, you need a lot of memory, you waste a lot of memory. But here, 
instead of joining we called it as pre-join so let's say a product uh, will have some price and the price we will not keep it in some other table but I have third product which uh, speaks about its uh, services from certain call center numbers and this product is mobile sim or in, uh, internet let's say. So the name of the product is internet it might not have any weight. It has some price associated to its let's say so this is a simple JSON right price this is 199 and then they say that uh, this product is uh, applicable in certain states let's say only Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu so we can create another object here So if we have let's say Asim, you're recording the session now, no? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. And later on if they want like uh, after some time I can redo it from my home Wi Fi. Okay. The speed would be greater. So we can publish that. I think yeah, that would be better. But many people not able to see the screen. Yeah. Mumbai team is also paying they must they'll be they will be able to see the video, no? Yeah, they can uh, they catch up on video. video no, like the okay. recorded video will send. Mm -hmm. in okay, I'll just, uh, I mean, I think we can do one thing. Let us carry on with the thing. Uh, he will send the link to everyone. So I think we can do that way. Okay, sure. Thank you, Mumbai. Thank you, Mumbai. Thank you. I think that's better. Okay. So, so the internet product which we have, we launched it in multiple states all together and price for all the states was different. So there are two ways, either you create another table with states with price and do uh, complex queries to get the result or simple ways we just embed that we have state and for each state you would have price. So we say for Maharashtra, since the tax is more, we'll sell this same product for 210 bucks however the same product in Tamil Nadu will be 199 and the same product in Haryana will be 99 things like that right uh, what we did is it's a pre-join here we have created another object which is carrying the different state prices for the same product so once we have to get the result out of it we don't have to do the query on the states table versus calculating the price we can very effectively so now imagine you are loading some ui page right now from the i have not let me just insert this product first so we are now inserting this right Let's double check if product is there. Yeah, product is there. Let's try to see it in pretty format. Okay, it's there. Now just imagine that uh, we, uh, from the UI perspective, application perspective, we have to fetch this information to the customer who is online and he just need the information. And our application is being handled by a database, uh, sorry, call center guy. So if he just write this query, he will get all the information here. Or we will be able to load this information without doing any joins. So this is the concept which is called as embedded document or the pre-join, which makes Mongo another like a very powerful tool. So people say uh, it as tagging, right? So we tag the product or we tag different uh, blog posts so if we tag and tag is a different table blog is a different table one blog can go for like 10, 10 things can be tagged let's say modi ji is uh, speaking about uh, 
the solar electricity which creates the clean energy right so imagine how many tags can happen for that blog post you have like clean india then you have you are showing progress and then you are showing make in india because we are making that uh, such kind of solar panels and lot right now if you multiply the 10 tags multiply by column and it becomes complicated but here let's say uh, we'll just uh, so i am trying to update uh, create one product which has some tags and we'll just put a array and all those things can uh, sit inside one document so whenever we have to fetch it's just single query it's not the multiplication and 10 queries to retrieve the tags so we'll have db dot blog dot insert so there this is a blog and let's say solar power and blog has its body I'm just typing xxx. Now we have tag. So no joins required. We'll just uh, put values uh, as simple JSON array. So let's say clean energy. And so on. So just to save time, we are just uh, you know doing this. So now we say db dot blog dot find. So when your UI has to load the page in the very first page, you can show the tags. I'll also like show you in some real blogs rather. So like posted in, so this falls into cloud and this and uncategorized and all that. So these uh, stuffs are like very faster to load once you use uh, the embedded collections or uh, which we call as pre-join. So now we are on the, you know, we'll wrap it up and then uh, if people have any question or specific uh, uh, direction they want to go, we like uh, go in that direction. So uh, MongoDB has one limitation, which uh, like I have been praising MongoDB since we started the, uh, but you know, even God has some, uh, uh, you know, shortcomings, even Rama and even Moon has some spots, right? So same way MongoDB has a very big shortcoming, which is uh, called as lack of transaction and uh, no rollback, which is like provided by it. That's why the financial corporation or the banks and they are like very reluctant to use it. Just imagine I have a Mongo database collection and uh, uh, there is some way that uh, me and Priscilla are doing some transaction, banking transaction, which assumes that we will uh, uh, withdraw some money from Priscilla's account and deposit in my account, right? But somehow the money is, so it has to happen that money when withdraws from her, my should get deposited, then the thing, thing is complete. But halfway the money has been withdrawn from her account and then it, power shut down or whatever. And then I didn't get the money. So second time when power came up, they again withdraw same amount from Priscilla's account. And then it happens somehow. So she would end up paying double or triple or I don't know because there is no transaction or half big cake kind of. So the transaction helps that when both things, both accounts are settled, then it could get finalized. So in Mongo 3.2, they are trying to come up with uh, such things uh, to prevent uh, the uh, like um, lack of transaction. They called it as uh, double like uh, two-way commit and they're like uh, something other which is coming up other uh, ways or workarounds which are efficient because if they'll try to do the same thing which uh, is the existing problem then uh, I mean there is no way right once we say okay we are faster we have less constraint and another way we put a lot of constraints and boundaries to slow it down so 
they'll come up with something so that is uh, what uh, uh, that's why you see uh, in the here that oracle and they are the uh, top picks still and mongo is among like top 5 but not the among the first right but in days to come just keep an eye i don't know in what database you or your team works but you can always check the rating like how lousy your database or how good the technology in which you are working and uh, keep an eye on this so now coming uh, to our last slide which is mongodb university so uh, like proprietary databases they charge huge money like oracle and all that but mongodb is free so uh, and not only it's free but people they also contribute to make it better that's how things evolves faster and better right and then they also provide free training and free certifications so if you feel that uh, you should go for it in your part time maybe you have to uh, you know start looking into some new upcoming technology just go with university.mongodb.com so let us assume that page has been loaded here so it would show you some courses to pick up for a particular language which you are interested in let's say if you are using note right so there is a handle for uh, uh mongo for node for python for like every other languages and they have like different uh, programming certification uh, like developers program for 7 weeks so each week they will give you some task and then uh, you go through it's like uh, uh, one and a half hour video so you can watch like half an hour video in your free time even in office office will allow the study uh, right so you can go like half an hour daily or 15 minutes whatever to those question and answers and after one week uh, like after finish of each week there are some uh, quiz and some question and answers uh, if you like uh, answer them then they will give you like grade so for each seven weeks they will have some grade so they will combine the each week's grade like let's say they asked you four questions or five questions and you answered five out of five so this week you have like 100% next week you have 100% they'll accumulate and finally uh, at the end of seventh week they'll give you a, a real hands on project to submit which is again not very big you just have to spend one weekend maybe and then you submit it and they will evaluate and give you answer so the certificate will be combination 50% of your seven weeks grade and 50% of your final exam and then um, you will get the certificate that's it so uh, the training material is very simple very awesome if you face problem the community support is also very good they provide you and once you do hands on so i have also when i did my certification i also put it on uh, uh, this thing the github so probably if you guys want to you know check it out how you will uh, get the ready made homeworks because when i used to do homework i will like uh, push it in my github repository so i don't know it's not loading yet you can share your repository with yeah i will like share the repository like it's uh, in my uh, github handle just go to mongo certificate 2016 and you will find uh, the answers for most of the questions or whatever they ask just uh, for uh, you know to make it easier and interesting you can try it out and then go ahead and uh, clear the certification it will add stars stars to your resume and for company's perspective it would be you know better for us to attract more clients since we say that we work on cutting edge technology and this is one of the cutting edge technology so it's like win win relationship for both for us and for the company it's just a matter of you know paying some additional time half an hour daily and going through these uh, mongodb programs and i'll uh, whosoever are developer we have a developer group here 
in uh, Axion. So I'll like keep sharing some useful information on MongoDB through that uh, uh, list also. Right. So does anyone have any question either remotely or here? What is the Atlas? Yeah. So this uh, Atlas thing is uh, a MongoDB on so cloud. So you've chosen MongoDB. So I'll just uh, uh, tell about the Atlas. So uh, now they are trying to uh, provide MongoDB as a service on client, which means it would be hosted on different zones, geographical zones, and you can use it as a service directly. Like uh, we use AWS, it has its DynamoDB, something like that. So Mongo says uh, if you have to uh, like uh, buy a server, then install MongoDB, then do some DBA stuff, job stuff, and then it becomes usable. So you don't have to do that thing, pay as you go, whatever amount of MBs you are using in data or the bandwidth on Mongo Atlas, on the base of that, uh, on the basis of that, uh, you, I mean you would be charged. So pay as you go, Atlas. And it's like uh, you uh, skip all the hassles of setting up and everything, all DBA so it's like cloud cloud version okay guys awesome so thanks everybody for joining thank you can you stop the recording hello sir thanks